Hey everyone, CNT Keith here. Hey, I stopped out at Kai's place to check out his Acorn Equipped Dynamite 3000 lathe, CNC lathe. He's got an older laptop running, connected to the Acorn, but he bought a touchscreen off of eBay. And he's got stepper motors on this particular unit, uh, being run by a little Gecko G540, and of course controlled by the Acorn CNC controller. He put a little Shars tool post on there. And he's got a bunch of brand new tools and tool holders. So in this video today, we're going to show you all how to set up the tool library on the Centroid CNT12 lathe software. Now, I've already homed this machine out when I powered up, um, but I'm going to go ahead and just hit reset home here on the, the virtual control panel. And I'm going to show you the x-axis limit switch. There it is. It just homed out. And it's a little tough to see, but there's a Z1 down here that it's going to bounce off of. Okay, there it is at the home position. And the DRO always reads the work coordinate position. That's the distance that X and Z are from the X and Z zero position that was last used. Well, if you hit uh, Alt-D on the keyboard, it switches to machine coordinates. And notice it's at zero, zero. That's because we're at the home position. And by definition, when you're homed out on X and Z, that position is zero, zero. But from an operator standpoint, what we're interested in is the part zero position in both X and Z. So the DRO always reads what position, the distance you are, from the part position or the work coordinate system. And we're on work coordinate number one, which is G54. Now on an open loop lathe like this, it's very important that you reset the X0 position every time you turn the machine on. Because the reason for that is, while the homing is fairly accurate, it might be within a couple thousandths on switches like this, we want to get this X0 position set to the exact center line of the spindle. So when the DRO reads zero, we want the tip of the tool to be at X0, the reference tool that we're going to use to measure all our other zeros. So the very first thing you have to do on an open loop system like this is set the center line of the spindle to zero so the DRO reads zero when the tip of the tool is at that position. We're going to do that. Um, now if you happen to have a hybrid system like the Dyne 2 AC brushless servos that have a Z reference output and there are other AC brushless and hybrid systems that have a Z reference output, what that would do is home off a marker pulse that's on an encoder on the back of the motor. And if you had a system like that connected up to the Acorn and were using that marker pulse output, you would not have to reset the X0 position every time that you turn the machine on and off. Because once it's set, and if you have very accurate homing, it always stays the same. Which is a nice thing about installing hybrid AC brushless or stepper motors that have that Z reference output capability. But in this machine, we don't. It's pure open loop. There's no encoders, no Z reference output, it's just a G40. We got some fairly accurate switches here, so it homes out in very close to the same position, but we still want to reset the X0 position so it's exactly center line. So let's go ahead and do that. The very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit F1 setup, F1 part, and Z comes up first, but I'm going to hit set X. And it asks me for the position that I'm touching, the tool number that I'm using, and whether I want to set all work coordinates. I'm going to go ahead and change that to yes to set all work coordinates. So the very first thing I'm going to do is grab tool one. And this is just a, a regular turning tool, run-of-the-mill turning tool. And I'm going to stick tool one in the tool holder and tighten her up. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to jog tool one over here and touch off of this diameter. And we're, you, you can do this a couple of different ways. You can touch off and use a piece of paper to touch off, or you can just turn on all new diameter here. Well, for video purposes, it's easier to touch off. 
so I can hold the camera and not have a running spindle near my hand. So that's the method I'm going to use. But you could use either one. a piece of paper and put in here and I'm going to switch to incremental. Kai's working in millimeters. I really need three hands to be doing this. Oh there we are. Papers just grabbing. Okay, excellent. Now I'm going to take a pair of calipers and then I'm going to measure that diameter. Now, right now on the screen it says the diameter is minus 2.2. Well, we're going to change that because that doesn't match what we're seeing here. Okay, so I'm going to grab my calipers here and I'm going to measure the diameter that I'm touching off of. And it looks like it's 8. Point, it's very close to 8. There you go, 8.12. So what I want to do is type in the position, 8.12 millimeters. I made a little mistake there. I'm going to back up, 8.12. Tell it what tool number I'm using. I'm using tool 1 and hit set. You always want to do this with the tool that you're going to end up using the reference tool. So I'm going to end up using tool 1 as my reference tool, which I'm going to explain in a minute. Um, so now, this, the DRO reads 8.120 in diameter. And if I look down here, I've got the tool touching the diameter of 8.12. So the tip of this tool is it 8.12 in diameter and so we have effectively set the center line of the spindle to zero. So now that I have my X diameter set just to make things look pretty here I'm gonna go ahead and move the tool out a little bit. I'm just gonna set an arbitrary Z0 right here for now and I'm gonna go ahead and switch to uh, I'm going to go ahead and set. i got to hit F10 to set that. And I'm go back to Z. And I'm going to hit set Z0. So I've set the X diameter at the center line of the spindle. And I just set an arbitrary Z0 right now. Z0 is easy. You're going to be changing that all the time, depending on the parts that you're making. Um, okay. Now we're ready to go measure our tools. And the way we're going to do this is we're simply going to use the lathe itself as an accurate measuring device. And all tool offsets are is simply the difference in length in tools. So this is my tool one right here, and this is tool two. When I measure, when I use this as a reference tool, tool one, and then I go measure tool two offsets, the numbers that we're going to come up with are simply how much longer or shorter tool 2 is than tool 1. That's what a tool offset is. So you can actually physically measure these with, a, with whatever technique you want um, and find out what the, the difference between these two are and type that number in and that would work. Well I have an accurate way to measure right here so I'm going to go ahead and use the machine to measure the difference between tool one, which I'm going to call and define as my reference tool. And all that means, all the reference tool means, is it's simply a tool that we're going to measure all our other tools against. So how we do this is we, again, we come down here with tool one, we touch a diameter or make a skim cut, say, hey, this is the point I want to measure all my tools from and then simply change the tools 
change over to the next tool, and touch the same position with the next tool. Well, the machine is going to have to move a little further or not, far as, not as far because the tool's a different length. And we're simply going to use the control that knows where it's at to tell us what that number is. So let's go ahead and do it. I'm going to put tool 1 back in the tool holder. I'm going to go ahead and jog back over. Okay, so I've got tool 1, which is my reference tool, touching off my known diameter, which is 8.210 millimeters. And to measure the tools, I go set up, tool offsets, and I'm going to arrow key over, and it's here on tool 1, to the X offset for tool 1. And when I'm on the X offset, this button shows up, X diameter, and I'm going to press it. And if you read this, it says load, to the, load the reference tool. Well, we've already done that. Tool 1 is in here. That's what we're going to use for the reference tool. Jog to the reference position. Well, we've already done that. We've jogged to the position. And all a reference position is is simply a point that we decide. It could be any diameter that we're going to measure tools from. It doesn't have to be the same thing that I just used to set X0 with. This could be 2 inch in diameter. It doesn't matter. Just so we know what the diameter is. And then it says press F10 to save the reference, or you can type the reference location in below. Well, I'm going to go ahead and hit F10 to save the reference position. Now, all I did by doing that is simply tell the control, just simply memorize where you're at, because this is where I'm going to touch off all my other tools to the same position, and we're going to measure the difference in length between all these tools off of this point. So, Watch, what do you think is going to happen here? i got tool 1 and I'm on the offset for tool 1. If I hit measure tool F2, what do you think is going to happen there? Well, it's set to 0 right now. If I hit measure, measure X offset, blam, and I hit F10 to measure it, hey, it's still 0. Well, of course, because this tool, I didn't move the machine. This tool is not shorter or longer than itself. So the tool offsets for tool 1, which is also my reference tool, on, on this method that I'm teaching, are always going to be 0 for X and 0 for Z. So I'm actually all done now with tool 1 for setting the X offset. What I can do now is hit tool check, and tool check will retract in X and Z move away from the material that I'm touching off of so I can change the tool safely. I'm going to go ahead and do that, <clears throat> and by the way, as you work through this tool library and you set all your offsets and nose vectors and all that kind of good stuff, it's always a good idea to hit F10 save every once in a while and then just go right back into it so you save your work. I'd hate to see you to go through a whole bunch of tools and then uh, hit escape accidentally and not save your work. Well, I'm going to go ahead and hit tool check right now, and we're going to watch the machine retract to the tool check position. Now, this tool check position might be a little different on your machine because you notice normally tool check will tool check the whole way back to the home position, which is way back here. But what I did earlier is I told it that I want the tool check position to be here. And, and this is nice because I'm working with short work and I don't want to waste a bunch of time always rapiding the whole way out to the home position and then having to jog the whole way back. I just have my tool check position so it's far enough away that I can easily change my tools. So I'm going to go ahead and put tool 2 in. And by the way, I'll just show you where you set that uh, tool check position. I'm going to hit Escape, Part F1. I'm going to hit Work Coordinate Table. And then I'm going to go into Return. And there's a bunch of Return G codes in here. But Return number 1 is the tool check position. And all I did is I put a minus 165 in there, which is simply the Z position that we're at relative to home. So if I told it minus 10, it would tool check here, and minus 50, it would tool check here, etc. But at minus 165, that's right here, that's the position. And if I wanted it to tool check to some other location, I just simply type the number in there, whatever I want, and then hit F10. And then when I hit tool check, that's the position that it goes to. That's a pretty nice feature. Okay. So let's go back to the 
tool offset menu. I had tool two in, so I'm going to go to the X offset of tool two. And what I'm going to do is simply jog this tool over and touch that same position that we Okay, great. Maybe just one more. Yep, I'm just kissing it there. So now I've got tool two touching that same 8.12 diameter that we set as our reference. I'm on the offset value for tool two, so I'm simply going to hit measure tool, F2. Measure X diameter and hit F10. And look at the number. I hope you can see that. It appeared in there. Come on down. 0 0.301. So this tool in X is only 0 0.301 millimeters different than tool 1. That's all there is to it. Now I go do the next tool. I'm going to hit tool check. Okay, we got tool two all measured up on the X offset, and I'm going to pop tool three in, and we're going to just touch off the same location. Great. Okay, so we got tool three touching that same diameter. So all I do is move the cursor down to tool height offset three. I hit measure tool, measure X. It says go ahead and touch it. I hit F10, and now we got a new number in there. And the number for tool three on the X offset is 13.512. So tool three is 13.512 millimeters shorter than tool one. So if I stack these two guys up, you're going to see what I'm talking about. So I'm going to go ahead and hit tool check. I'm going to pop tool three out and I'm going to stand it up here. And There you go. You can look at tool one on the left and tool three on the right. And the distance between the tip of this and the tip of that is 13.12 millimeters, 13.512 millimeters, which is what we have in the offset menu. That's how simple it is. That's all we're doing. We're just using the CNC machine as an accurate pair of calipers. That's all we're doing here. So now I could go ahead and put tool four in. And you just keep repeating the same process for all the particular tools. Now I'm doing OD tools here, which are the easiest to understand. The procedure is very similar for ID tools, 
Um, there's just uh, some different techniques you use with an indicator to center an ID tool along the center line of the spindle. There's examples of that in the lathe, the CNC 11 lathe operator manual with pictures on how to set up uh, ID tools. Just go ahead and follow that. And I think once you uh, have seen this video and understand how this menu works right here, you'll be able to understand that. This is a little cutoff tool, so I would just do the same thing. I just come down here, touch off the same position, measure tool, and get the X offset. Now, what about Z? Z offsets are very similar to X. And what we'll do is we'll put tool one back in and we'll set our Z reference position. I'm gonna go ahead and hit save out of the tool library, back up to the main screen, and we're gonna jog over and touch off of piece of paper and I'm just touching off the end of this particular piece of stock now all I'm doing here is I'm just going to use the end of this piece of stock as a place to measure the difference in length in Z with all these particular tools I'm going to back up a little bit yeah, that's it right there. Just just pinching that piece of paper. Okay, so same deal. Got tool one in here. I go set up offsets. I'm gonna come over to the Z value for tool one and I'm gonna hit Z ref. And all I'm doing is simply telling the control by pushing F10 right now that this is the position to memorize for now, for this session, to memorize so that we can measure the difference in length of all the Z values of all the tools. Now, if I hit measure tool right now, and I'm on tool one for the Z value, let's go ahead and do that, and I hit measure Z, guess what happens? It's a zero, because this tool is touching the reference position, and it's the reference tool, so it's not shorter or longer than itself. So. I'm going to hit tool check, tool check, I'm going to put tool 2 in, and I'm going to come on over, over to incremental a piece of paper maybe one more yeah that's it I'm back off just a little bit there it is it's got it so right now I have two, two, tool two loaded. I'm touching the Z reference with tool two. I'm gonna arrow key down to the Z reference for tool two and then hit measure Z. And of course hit F10 for it to actually do it. And a number shows up in there. Minus 2.324 millimeters. All that's saying is that this, this particular tool is just a little different than the reference tool in length and it's different by that amount that minus 2.32 so I'm gonna go ahead and hit tool check and we're gonna pop tool 2 out and let's check that out if I can line these up You can see they're very close in Z. 
So it's saying it's only two millimeters difference between these two particular tools, between tool one and tool two. Well, now I can do the same thing for the next tool, and the next tool, and the next tool. And you just go on and on, and you take each tool, and you touch off the particular Z position, the Z reference position for that day, and you keep hitting measure, and then you hit F10. And once you've set up all those tools in the tool library, now the control knows the difference in length in X and Z between the particular tools. That's all there is to it. Now there's different methods uh, on how to do this, but the method that I just taught and showed you in this video is the method that is in the CNC 11 lathe, centroid lathe operator manual. Uh, there's a very good chapter in there that goes over everything I just showed you in a step-by-step -step procedure. Have fun. Talk to you later.